now I'm like, calm stuff is the best stuff. And now, you know, my nervous system is healed and I can enjoy peace. But in the beginning, I only wanted chaos and I would chase chaotic jobs, chaotic relationships just to fill this need and make me feel comfortable. And then I would blame everybody else for my situation because I was always the one that things were happening to. I always got the bad job, always got the bad relationship, always had the bad friend. And it took me a long time to recognize my role in all of that stuff coming my way. Well, and that's big in resiliency. So I think resiliency is a lot of connecting with your power to choose. Because again, like that stuff doesn't fall out of the sky. Like you accepted those jobs. You actually pursued them and applied for them. And it's, it's hard to sit in the mirror and go, all right, how did I get here? Uh, a giant didn't just drop me out of the sky right here in this spot. I have made so many choices to get here. My choices in how I'm thinking about it, my choices in what I'm allowing in my life. And that means I'm in charge of what I'm allowing in my life. And if I just step into that power, that is an action of resiliency. That is a self-respect. I don't think we can be resilient without self-respect. You know, it is self-respecting to be resilient as is personal responsibility. It's part of why I'm so pissed at how nasty politics is and media is and because I think it's celebrating and lifting up the worst of society. Immaturity goes, it's your fault. It's not me. It's you. Shame, shame on you. I didn't do anything wrong. I'll be better when you're better. I'm just going to sit here and pout and be pissy. And everything about modern society and the internet is encouraging that kind of way of being. You, know? you didn't say the word that I think you should have said. You just traumatized me. We, we are teaching people to dis personal responsibility and to glorify blame. And all it's going to do is make people anti-resilient. It's going to make them splat. That's why the suicide rate is going. And so we've got to get really, really real on the individual level and societally, collectively, at what it means to actually be personally responsible. It's why if, if a younger person tells me they're an advocate, I take that with a real big grain of salt. Because we're not going to heal the world because a bunch of angry people are screaming about issues at each other, screaming who's at fault. We're going to heal the world when each person, frankly, takes responsibility for themselves, their internal world, and stops screaming at the world to be what they expect and want it to be. Yeah. And the hard part about that is, Jill, as you were talking, I was so glad you used the word chaos because that's what came to mind for me. And and I, I teach my clients immediately. I'm like, you have to stop saying you thrive in chaos. You hear people say that all the time. I'm like, motherfucker. I used to say that. It's so it's but, gross. Like, if you think about it, it's insane because why would you not mm -hmm. want to thrive in peace and joy and hope and harmony and kindness and compassion and, and power, right? Being in chaos is like, I have a stack of bills on my desk that I'm not taking care of and debtors are calling me and I am overweight and I'm destroying my life. And my family doesn't like me. And I got fired from another job and I had unprotected sex with the 12th person this month. And life is good. No, dude, you're high, which you probably are also. And so it's like, okay, if you're thriving in chaos, like, are you really thriving or is it just something that you've been conditioned into? And that's where it gets really, really tricky about this whole conversation of, because when you take this really hard, candid look at your own life and you reverse engineer it back into the behavior patterns that started through childhood, it's like, okay, why do I thrive here? Why am I the mouse who keeps getting shot? Because it's really just become indoctrinated in you in a way where it's normalized. You're like, oh, it's normal for me to be in a relationship where we scream at each other. It's normal. For me to be underpaid, but then complain, you know, it's these normalities that we have in our life. It's like, it's only going to remain normal as long as you choose to have it be normal. And then when you're measuring that against, and look, I, I always, I say this in jest, but like, I've been legit attempted canceled four times on the internet because of keeping it real. Because like what Nikki said, like I said something that you didn't like, and now you're traumatized by me. It's like, no, I'm not gaslighting you because you don't agree with me. Like, that's not how this works. I'm not a narcissist because you don't like the way I speak. Like, that's not on me. Like, that's your own shit you have to deal with. 